I'm Tom Salta. I'm often asked by composers, how do I go about running my stems so that they sound like the final mix? All right? What master output effects do I include or not include when I'm running out stems? And quite frankly, the same thing goes for multi-tracks. So in this video, I'd like to demystify the entire process and show you quite simply what is safe to include when you are running your, your stems and multi-tracks and what's not safe to include. So for this example, I'm gonna go back to the main theme of Death Loop. All right, what you're looking at here is uh, all the plugins that I have on the master output bus. All right, and this is what it sounds like. <laughs> Okay, and this is what it sounds like with nothing on the master bus. So yeah, that's not very subtle at all. Uh, in this particular piece, I wanted to do some very aggressive processing on the master uh, bus, which uh, became part of the retro sound of the theme. Are you ready for the secret? If you want your stems to sound exactly like your full mix when you load them all in at Unity, you can include any effects you want except dynamic effect processing, so compressors and limiters. And the reason's pretty simple, okay? A compressor and a limiter are lowering the volume of your musical material, right? So if you throw everything through it and the drums are really loud, and it hits the compressor with all the rest of the mix involved, it's gonna lower kind of everything together. But when you separate them as stems, sure, it'll lower just those drums, but then when I put other material through it that's quiet, it's not gonna lower it at all. So what you're, hap what you're actually doing is you're changing your mix, you're changing the relative volume of different stems or multi-tracks in your mix so that when you put them all together it's not going to sound the same as if you ran all that material at the same time through the limiter or the compressor or both okay so let me show you in a real world scenario how this actually works this is the theme to death loop and i'm just taking this short section here so this is what it sounds like together again <music> Okay, now I'm gonna turn all of these off. This is what it sounds like with nothing. Now let's take a listen of what the Studer is doing. With. Okay, yeah, it's lowering the volume of it, but it's also kind of putting this, this this warmth it's kind of easing off it's rolling off the highs okay it's not really doing much in the way of compression and limiting there might be a little bit but it's nothing really noticeable you can kind of look at the line there so I'm gonna throw this in the category of an EQ kind of thing, all right? Now let's go to the next thing in here, which is this RC20. So the RC20, I made two instances and I separated two of the components and you'll see why soon. In this case, this RC20 is doing this. subtle but it's adding a little more kind of tube saturation a little bit under the distortion category here so it's warming it up even more it's kind of aging it a little bit more but it's not doing any noticeable compression or limiting that means if I run stems with those things on we should be good to go now let me go to the uh, ozone right now this one let's take a listen this is with it. Without it. You hear it? 
So you can even see, if you look at the limiter, you could see when that limiter kicks in and how much it's reducing the gain. <music> sometimes almost 4 dB. Okay, so that means if my theory is correct, we do not want to include ozone when I run stems or at least having the limiter on it because it's not gonna sound the same when you put all those stems together. Let me show you. So what I did here is I used auto bounce to run an experiment that I would never take the time to run manually because it would take me all afternoon. Uh, I ran a variety of different combinations of stems, mixes, and multi-tracks with different um, master outs turned on and off. So this one, for example, is unmastered stems, unmastered multi-track, unmastered mix, right? This one is fully mastered with everything. This one is just the stems with the studer. This is the stems plus the studer plus ozone. This is the multi-track plus the studer, the multi-track studer ozone. You get the idea, and I kind of ran all these different combinations for this demonstration, all right? So I'm gonna hit bounce, and then I'm gonna load all of those stems, multi-tracks, and mixes in a single logic project and let you listen and compare and see what's the quickest and smartest way to run your stems and multi-tracks so that when you put them all together, it sounds just like the final mix. Are you ready? Now there's one more consideration you have to keep in mind if you're gonna start playing around and turning limiters off when you're running your stems. You need to be mindful of what the master output volume fader is gonna do. Is it gonna clip? So in this example, in order to determine that, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna turn off ozone and I'm gonna play the loud part of this mix. In this case, it's just these four bars. Now I want you to look at the master output fader. Ready? See how it's 1.3 in the red? Now if I turned ozone on, even though it sounds way, way louder, you can see that it's 5.6 dB below <laughs> the zero mark, right? So you can't always trust your ears. Um, what this means is if you want to avoid clipping, yes, you can turn on avoid overload protection in Logic, and that's cool. But if you want to do it the technically the correct way, you can compensate when you turn the limiter off by lowering the master fader volume. Fortunately, Auto Bounce has a handy dandy tool to do this on a per job basis. So in this case, when I'm running these unmastered stems and multi tracks, I can click here master output level and make it negative two, which is gonna bring it below that 1.3 overage, okay? And I can do this for each of the unmastered jobs, but when I do the mastered mix, I can return it to zero. Here we go, let's hit bounce, and then I will show you all of those tracks brought in to a single logic project so we can kind of compare and listen to what they sound like. Here we go. And we're back. So Auto Bounce finished. It took just under an hour. And look at this. We have four sets of multi-tracks, four sets of stems, and four mixes. So remember, the goal is to come up with a set of stems that is going to sound as close to the final mix as possible. And by final mix, I mean the final mastered mix, right? And we want to determine what can we include and what do we have to remove. Okay, so. This is what the final mastered mix sounds like when you run the original session through the full master output effects chain. This is the goal. Right? But if we were to keep that mastering chain on with the limiter and the dynamic, you know, effects, the compressor, the whole thing, maximizer, if we did that and ran each stem through it, this is what the final combined result would sound like. Now let's listen. One more time. 
pay particular attention to the drums. I hear a distinct difference in the way that the limiter and the compression is working between these two, and that's not good. Okay? This feels more glued together. And this... You can hear like the drums are different, the way that they're behaving with the music. So that's not going to work. Okay, so what is going to work? Well, let's check it out. This is the one that is completely unmastered. The full mix sounds like this. Stems. Multi-tracks. That sounds remarkably close. So we can say that definitely that works. That is preserving the original mix when everything is at unity whether it's multi-tracks or stems. Great, let's take it one step further. How about we add that Studer back on? Remember, it kind of changed the sound. It, it smoothed out, it took out some of that high end and kind of um, gave it a little bit more warmth. So let's take a listen. This is the full mix. This is the stem. And this is the multi-track. Again, I'm not hearing really any difference, particularly in the dynamics. There's nothing changing. Let's take it one more step. This is the Studer plus the RC20 distortion module. Now again, it was very, very, very subtle and it wasn't doing any dynamics. So let's listen. This is what a full mix sounds like through the signal chain. And these are the stems combined. And the multi-track. That's identical. So what we see here is that anytime you do not have dynamics, when you're running off your multi-tracks and stems on that master bus, you're pretty safe. You know that your stems are gonna match what it would sound like if you just had the whole mix run at the same time. So that's good. That's the way I like to deliver stuff to my clients. I ran an extra little bonus set of stems here. This time I left ozone on, but I took off the modules that were limiting it and maximizing it. Again, the dynamic processing is what you want to avoid when you're running stems and multi-tracks. Okay, so that means right here, if I were to put these back on and turn these guys off because I had the, the two EQs left on, this should sound like that with this on. Ready? Here we go. Does that sound like this? Yes, it does. And that confirms the point. When you're running your stems, don't have any dynamic processing as part of the signal chain. You can include other processing that just colors the sound, but nothing that does dynamic processing. This includes maximizers, limiters, and compressors. Thanks so much for watching. Please be sure to subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.